We're here with a few of the guys from Fate's Warning. You guys want to introduce yourselves? And Hi, this is Jim. It's Joe. Hi, this is Frank. It's been a while since we've heard from Fate's Warning, um, since the last album came out. What have you guys been doing in that time? Um, writing and recording the new album and doing a little bit of touring for the No Exit album. It's been about a year since the last album came out. We did about three or four months worth of touring and all the rest of the time was spent writing the new album. You've been through a lot of personnel changes in the the career of the band and you know a few more or at least one more since the last album came out um you want to go into that a little bit okay um basically right now the two original members are myself and joe uh first personnel change was after the second album the specter within uh we replaced the original guitar player with frank uh the following year we did awaken the guardian after that and before no exit uh we replaced our original vocalist, John Arch, with Ray Alder. And then just recently, this past year, uh, we replaced our drummer, Steve, with Mark Zonder, who some people might remember from uh, Warlord, which is one of the early Metal Blade bands. Do you feel that um, all these personnel changes have changed the style of music that you're making? Yeah, each one has changed the sound of the album that, we'd, that we've done with the new personnel. This one, with the addition of Mark, I think has changed the style a lot. Probably even more so, or at least to the same extent that replacing um, John Arch with Ray has. Mark's drumming just added a, a new dimension to the band. It's kind of like adding another instrument, really, another string instrument. He just plays so many unique and different things. And your styles seem to have progressed a lot from album to album, mm -hmm. as we were just saying. Is this a conscious effort, something that you guys try to do? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Each album... We want to progress from each album so it doesn't sound like the previous one and we don't repeat ourselves. So it's always a progression for us musically and it's also kind of a challenge for the listeners, hopefully, because they kind of got used to a style on the previous album and hopefully they liked it. So sometimes they're expecting on the next album to hear something very similar and usually they don't hear something very similar. Uh, not similar at all, as a matter of fact. It's, we really work hard to make sure that it's going to be different. Just... just uh, for musicians' sake alone, if anything, I think usually there's you can, you can tell it's fate's warning, which is it's always it's always a big difference. I think the difference is bigger from no exit to perfect symmetry than any other albums. Yeah, but it's hopefully, big, like, like you said, hopefully there's a common theme through all of them that people can recognize as uh, a fate's warning sound. So you don't think that you're running the risk of alienating your fans by making well? There's a always a certain risk that we're going to alienate certain segment of the fans, but hopefully we'll gain new fans, and hopefully most of the hardcore people that have been with us from the beginning will change with us as we change styles. How do you guys go about writing a Fate's Warning song? Um, lately, on this album especially, it's become quite complicated because everyone lives in different places around the country now. Three of us live in Connecticut, and one lives in Texas, and now Mark lives in California. Um, so the process on this album was myself or Frank, as usual, would write the uh, basic concept and the basic structure of the song at home on guitars. Um, then we would get together as a three-piece, myself, Frank, and Joe, and work it out instrumentally, all the guitars. And when we were happy with that, we would make a tape of it, usually a four-track tape, and send it out to California for Mark to learn. Um, he'd put the drums to it, send it back to us, and then we would send that tape to Texas with the lyrics, and Ray would start working on the melody lines. So it was usually a good two months, probably, until we actually had a completed song, because it has to go through so many channels. Does the fact that the band members live so far apart make it difficult for you to write, do you think? I mean, creatively, do you feel that you're not on the same wavelengths with each other because you're so separate? No, I don't, I don't, I don't think so, because... The the main body of writing is done with the musicians all living in the same area. And uh, as far as our ideas go, all, we always sit down before we start writing to get all our ideas on target of what we, what we right. want to do, what kind of style we want to achieve, what kind of sound we want to achieve. Um, then, we, then we just go for that. And usually... And like in, in this case, Mark knows exactly what we're trying to do. Even if we don't tell him anything, he can tell by just listening to the music. So he automatically would fit to it. And he would play the, the, the style that be best suits that style of music. So uh, 
and, and Ray does the same, so I think it's it's not any harder, but uh, and I don't think it could get any easier either. This is the first time we did it that way, but it seemed to have worked pretty good. I think it actually helped in the long run, or at least it was a good change for us rather than doing the same old process that we've done in the yeah. past couple of years. This was a good change for us. How long did you spend recording this album? It was done in about four or five weeks, which is fairly short. Yeah, there's absolutely no way that you can tell that it only took four or five weeks. I think, I think, a, I think a lot of bands take a long time because... They go into the studio not knowing exactly what yeah. they want to do. When we go in the studio, we know exactly how we're going to record it, exactly what we want to record. We're not like experimenting in the studio, we're not writing in the studio. Everything, we know exactly what we're doing when we go in. Where'd you record this album? We did it, um, same team, same production team, and the same studio as last year, um, that being Carriage House Studios in Connecticut, um, produced by Roger Probert, executive producer, Max Norman, and the same engineer as last year title for the new album is Perfect Symmetry. Right. Where'd you come up for that, and is there any meaning behind it? Um, there's not a lot of meaning behind it. Um, most of the albums previous have been concept albums. All the songs were kind of interrelated and dealt with common themes. This one, lyrically, it doesn't have any common themes running through it. But musically, the title comes from the fact that, like we said before, we wanted to do something different. And what we've done on this album is most of the songs, a good percentage of them, Rather than the three instruments, as in most pop, pop music or metal music, the three guitars, the two guitars and bass, usually play pretty much the same thing with the bass playing underneath an octave and just following the guitars, and the drums doing pretty much the same thing. On this album, what we've tried to do is, whenever possible, have the three guitars playing something different, but all coming together as a whole and making a, you know, one song that sounds very, very coherent but we're still playing three different things and the drums are trying to play something different as well, so it's very polyphonic. Mm -hmm. 